to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My name is Bear Wozniak. I'm your adventure guide. At Deep Adventure Ministries, we believe that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild, and we do mean wild, the wild adventure of God's will. There's no better way than to live <clears throat> than to live according to God's will. God made you. He gave you a unique, spiritual, rational soul. There's only one you that's ever been made. And he knows uh, the gifts and the talents and the abilities that he's given you. And when you release those to God to guide you and to fill you and, and to, uh, to, uh, to you know, put grace into, infuse in you his love and his power, you get ready for a ride. Um, there, you know, like I remember my son, Jeremiah, about 10 years ago, we would be going out uh, on our surfboards out, to Wa out in Waikiki, maybe a half a mile out, diving down grabbing a boulder and running underwater, holding our breaths. And then he did really long paddles and he prepared himself. <clears throat> and it just so happened that coming winter, the biggest swells in 40 years, he was towed in by a jet ski and dropped in and surfed over an 80 foot wave. That can't even come close to comparing the ride that God has for you when you abandon, abandon yourself to his will. But once he caught that wave, he was pretty much locked in. He had no choice. <laughs> he was going to ride that wave till the very end. And he had to ride it almost a mile and a half before he could even kick out. So um, get ready for the ride of your life. And I, I wanted to say that I am really something in the visceral, most visceral part of my spiritual soul is this gritty, just thrill and hope and excitement because the Holy Spirit is on the move in the Catholic Church cleaning house. And uh, praise God for that. It's a sign of, of a time of harvest when the wheat is separated from the chaff. It's the time of harvest. It's the time for us to go deep with the Lord. It's time for us to, as, as, as laity especially, to know it's time for us to go deeper with the Lord because the laity is going to be used by the Holy Spirit to help extract that sliver from the eyes of the, of the, of the, the, cler the clerics, the priests, the bishops, the cardinals, uh, in our church, the laity is having to point now and say, that's not going to happen anymore. But if that's true, you've got some work to do because you better get rid of that log in your own eye. No more tolerance for sexual sin in your life. Zero tolerance. Yes, we're, uh, Satan is a predator and he's, he's, he's predatory towards us. He's uh, attacking us, us with, uh, with desire for sexual sin, with pornography, with uh, you know, um, liaisons that are in a, that are not moral and, uh, all kinds of things like that. And yeah, we all, we all are going to have to fight that fight against lust, but fight it. And that means go to your priest, go to confession, pray the rosary, root it out, get it out by its root. Don't let Satan have even an inch of a stronghold in the area of sexual sin in your life. Cause it's time for us as the laity to take that sliver out of the the eyes of our leadership in our church that are, have either been predatory or allowed it to happen. It's time for us as laity to help them in this cause and to challenge them. But it starts with you living a life of personal holiness. Don't put up with it anymore. If you're living with a woman and you're not married to her, you better be living as brothers and sisters until you get that situation sorted out. Just don't tolerate, don't tolerate it anymore. And as you seek this life of personal holiness, then be ready. When you see something that you that you question, stop worrying about, well, am I spreading gossip or am I or do I know what's really going on? Go to your bishop. Appeal to your bishop and say, or to your priest and say, I've noticed this. I'm concerned about this. I was reading in St. John Chrysostom uh, this morning, one of his first uh, writings that he did around the year 380 AD, before he was even ordained as a priest, he was a deacon. Uh, one of the seven main deacons in the Antioch church. And one of his jobs was, other than reading the Gospels, was, you know, at, at the halfway, at halftime, you know, when 
between the liturgy of the, hour, the, the, the word and the liturgy of the Eucharist, they would have everybody leave. So this is 380 AD. If you weren't baptized, you had to leave. And then his job was for those people who remained, if he knew of someone that was in mortal sin, he would approach them and say, do not present yourself to communion. We need to start taking seriously uh, our role as the laity. If you see someone, uh, a political leader, who you know is a pro-life advocate, and he's presenting himself for communion, you should go up to him and challenge him and say, don't do it. If you see someone that is presenting themselves for communion and they're living in grave or mortal sin, challenge them. Uh, tell your priest. But I, you know, I, I was uh, talking to my friend Jason Jones the other day, and he was uh, there was a politician that pres- that came to mass on Mother's Day just because it was a great day to kind of show up. You know, it's Mother's Day; a lot of people will be there. And he told him, "Don't present yourself. Do not present yourself." And he said, "He said, you know, you can't tell me what to do." Basically, and Jason stood up in front of the congregation and said, "There's a man here today who's here only for political reasons." Uh, who is a pro-life, pro-life advocate, and he should not present himself for communion. We need to start taking our role as laity seriously. We have a role too. We are not cardinals, popes, or bishops, or priests, but we do have a role, and we need to start taking that seriously. But you better start it by a life of personal holiness. Wow. I don't know where that came from, but, uh, but I am excited what the Holy Spirit's doing in the church. Uh, today, as our adventure guide, our co-adventure guide, I've got a, a man that I have just a real love for, and I get to see him more than he gets to see me because I'm always working on editing Long Ride Home, and I see him, and I go, oh, I miss that guy, you know, but he doesn't even think about me, but I, I think about him a lot. Come on. <laughs> uh, what a miracle it is that, that how God brought us together. Tony Orband, uh, the guy who's, uh, you know, dark-haired, uh, mustache, uh, Tall, mustache, about six feet. That's a long mustache. That's my Tony joke. <laughs> hey, Tony Orban, welcome to the uh, Bear Wozniak adventure. Thanks for having me on, Bear. Good to be with you. It's, it's so been a while. great to see you. And uh, I, I see you're there in your, your house. Where are you right now, by the way? I am in my the little cell in the back corner of my house is the only spot that we could repair and kind of renovate quickly so I could actually start living here while we fix up the rest of the house. And where is that? Is that West Virginia or where is it? Uh, it's in uh, Southeast Virginia. Southeast Virginia. Uh, we won't tell you, tell people exactly where, cause all the women will be heading your direction. We don't want, <laughs> we don't want that to happen again. No, uh, Tony or Tony Orban, uh, tell them how we met. Oh, it was kind of funny. Um, it was, let's see, you, you got it. Most, most of it was your work there. So you got on the radio and I listened to the radio on EWTN, um, found your show, really liked it, really enjoyed your guests and um, the content that you guys were, were talking about and heard you were putting on this deep adventure quest, not a retreat, right? But a quest. Mm, and right. So um, I think it was the, the uh, surfing on the wake of oil tankers in the Gulf of Mexico that was really drawing me down there. But um, anyway, we went to Galveston, Texas, did the quest, and um, I remember just just chatting with you at uh, breakfast, I guess the morning of the second day or something like that. And you we you mentioned this idea of riding motorcycles and. Uh, making a, a TV show out of it. And I was thinking in my head, there's that, you know, could that actually happen? Is that something I could be possibly a part of, you know, and now here we are. <laughs> and you know what, Tony, what's so cool is, uh, by the way, if you guys want to see how good looking Tony Orban is, you can watch him on our bear Wozniak YouTube channel. It really should be called the Tony Orban channel, but, uh, the bear Wozniak YouTube channel, we're excited. A lot of people are, are pressing the subscribe button which is a big deal to us because once we get over a certain number, YouTube's going to start blowing up our, our, our show even more. So you may be listening on EWTN radio from a terrestrial radio or Sirius, uh, or the Sirius radio, or you might be listening on a podcast app. But why not go to our YouTube channel and watch, watch the show that way? Because we do a lot of work to get us on, on air. But yeah, so I had mentioned, um, mentioned you're possibly uh, 
joining us on this motorcycle ride that I don't even think was even uh, accepted. We had pitched it maybe, or I don't even know if we had put pitched it yet to EWTN. But anyway, I returned to the scene of scene of the crime uh, two days ago, Tony. Yeah. The scene of the crime. Yeah, I returned. I went with Gerard Middleton to the dealership where you bought your motorcycle. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. When we walked in there, Tony and I, uh, you know, he was just an innocent uh, bystander. <laughs> he got sucked into the vortex. That's right. And what happened? I stood, stood too close to the rocket ship. <laughs> <laughs> um. Man, we went in that day just just looking, just thinking. <laughs> okay, so I hadn't ridden my I hadn't ridden a bike since training four months prior, right? Yeah. And we had the ride coming up in two weeks or three weeks, whatever yeah. it was. And so we went in looking. I'm thinking, okay, I'll probably hit you know four dealerships, check it out, see what's out there. Nope. Hit the one. Bought the bike. You found the perfect uh, bike. It's the perfect bike <laughs> that's for you. Right. Yeah, yeah, and it, it changed was. everything about the ride because previously you were just going to rent a bike in Houston. And ride to the to South Bend, I mean not South right. Bend, the Big Bend, and then we were going to return to Houston. But you're buying That's that right. bike changed the whole show. Uh, we'll come <laughs> right back to talk more about Long Ride Home and really the star of the show, Tony Orband. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. We'll be right back with more. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We have on our show today, Tony Orband. It really should be called Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, starring Tony Orband. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, the Long Ride Home TV show has been such a major hit on EWTN. They always keep replaying it. And now, Tony, uh, in prime time, EWTN is showing our original show, the, the, one of our Deep Adventure Quest retreats, where you, met, you and I met on one oh. of those. And that was Great. with Shane using doing three cameras at once and sound and everything. No, no cast or crew, no uh, crew to help him. And now, um, you know, we got the Long Ride Home series up on iTunes and Prime Video and Google Play. So if you want to power watch the show, that's the way to do it. If you just want to see a trailer of the show, you can go to the Bears, the Bear Wastink YouTube channel and see the trailer there, or go to our new website. Tony, our new website is up. DeepAdventure.com website is up. It's looking all right. Looking really good. So we're talking about how Tony well, and I uh, go into this dealership just to kind of look at bikes. And I had returned to the scene of the crime two days ago with Gerard Middleton, another one of our cast members. Southern Baptist minister is on his way to becoming Catholic, by the way. And uh, so you walk in there and you see this, like, this bike. It was like your bike. Yeah. There were plenty of them to choose from. And I was looking at, I think it was like a Harley V-Rod. Um some really, really cool looking bikes. But in my mind, I was thinking, you know, new rider. I've never really actually been on the street. I should probably go with the other coolest bike in the yeah, shop. Yeah. Well, it was <laughs> meant for you. It fits yeah. you perfect. You're a long guy. You know, a bike kind of, right. a bike chooses you more than you choose the bike, don't you think? Um, in my limited experience, I think <laughs> so. Because this works out really well. And to be able to jump on it and run across country and you know you get the little aches and pains here and there after four hours of riding but um it has done so well and i've really enjoyed it well a bike is like a gun you know a gun has to fit you you know you pick up a gun and then there's that one one, one that just like oh this fits perfect it's kind of like the the same thing and tony did so tony you get this bike and we're st now we're now we go wait a minute you got a bike yeah <laughs> maybe we should ride from here. Maybe you should uh, join me on my ride to Texas. And then it crept even further, right? <laughs> yeah, what happened after that? <laughs> <laughs> well, we get, got the bike, and I was thinking maybe that would just be for practice. <laughs> but no, no, that was, okay, we're, we're getting the bike. We're, we're going together. We've got our chase cars with the guys, and we'll get all the way to the Big Bend, and maybe... Maybe fly back from there, right? Right. And and you continue on. And ship the bikes well, back. No, ship I your think, bike back. Yeah. That's right. But I think, was it mid-ride or maybe before the ride, um, we decided we'll do, the both of us would go all the way across to San Diego. Yeah, it was about uh, 10 days or maybe less before we left. Yeah. 
And uh, <laughs> we go, well, originally we were just going to go to Houston, pick up the rest of the pack, go to the Big Bend, and then turn around and come back. And you were just going right. to meet me in Houston. And then, oh, well, you'll ride with me. And then we look at the map. I go, wait a minute. The Big Bend is over halfway to San Diego. Let's just finish the ride. <laughs> and that last part of the ride where we did really, really long days was really part of the coolest thing. The real cool ministry happened uh, with that young MMA fighter who had brain damage and stuff. It was just a really, it was cool. And RG. What are, what are a couple of highlights place. you remember from, uh, and, or the challenges you remember from that, from that season one? Um, uh, those, I really, you know, now that you're saying it, those blasts through the desert, those two or three days where we just blast through the desert, that was long riding, um, high speed and a few short breaks cause we were on a time crunch. And so that, um, as a new rider, that was definitely a challenge, but I think, uh, the, as uh, you know, earlier on in, in Texas, I think the, the challenge was all of us guys going out into the desert, you know, having you know we knew each other but somewhat just met and we have to put this this show together <laughs> under your you know your your guidance and your leadership and what yeah which i didn't know what i was uh, doing but <laughs> and shane and jo uh, josh uh yeah the producers yeah well the the show would uh the results would beg to differ right well you know it's the men had no idea like what are they doing here why are we doing this they didn't really get a sense of what we had done until finally when we were shooting season two and we were up in Asheville, I think we'd just ridden the tail of the dragon. That's the yeah. first time they ever saw anything from the show. We'd already, season one wasn't done being in post-production and we were shooting season two. And then you guys saw, you know, one of the episodes in the hotel in Asheville. And Everybody was blown away. Yeah. yeah. It's all, you know, it's the vision of the, you know, I have the basic overview from a writing point of view, but it's the vision of the editors you know, uh, the magic of the B-roll, the music, uh, the narration that goes with it. And then you go, is that what was happening when we were up on the Mesa? Yeah. You know, <laughs> and like the coolest things is some of you, well, some of the coolest shots is you just wearing your, 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 um, your camera, you know, your hero camera, GoPro camera on your helmet and looking down and fueling up your, uh, your, 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 oh, yeah. I mean, it's just some of the coolest <laughs> shots like that were just so awesome. And I remember, before we did our, our shoot, I think our first official shoot, I was on the phone with the EWTN executives, and they're like, yes, and yes. And I go, you know what? We got to go. Why? Because it's going to rain. Oh, so you <laughs> got to get someplace before it rains? No. We want to have a shoot in a major thunderstorm. I mean, when rain. you're doing a reality show, right? <laughs> you got to capitalize on the conditions, right? And so the opening of the show is us riding. Is that is that very first scene that we shot was that scene of us Riding, which became, which was the early bands of Hurricane uh, Matthew. <laughs> yeah, we hadn't really planned on that. We were out doing a shoot further south down by the bridge, right? Yeah. And then we came back up and this storm just opened up. It, was, it wasn't, it was like a waterfall. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it, you know what I like about it is that, you know, we really didn't know how we would put all the pieces together. And none of the people involved in the production, the, the, the crew had ever been in a TV show. I'd been on a, a re, at least one reality show and done a lot of other kind of stuff. But um, yeah, they, they, they didn't know what they were getting themselves into. And it was really kind of cool because when you're on that long ride, Tony, after a while, you're like, you don't even know or care that there's a camera there. Right. You forget right. about it. You definitely don't care. <laughs> and, except for Lance Mackey. Lance Mackey loves the camera. <laughs> Always had to find it, right? <laughs> Well, we so, so, but that kind of, that kind of points to this fact that, you know, you got to listen to the Holy Spirit and then next thing you know, you're off on an adventure. Very much so. That, I mean, you, big adventure, you know, it, the, your life's going one direction. Um, and you, you start to hear something in the, the maybe the small, small, still quiet voice. Um, and you maybe seeking out opportunity and see what comes knocking. And then it's time to act, you know, got to actually step through the door, um, even though maybe you're not so confident as to where it's going to lead or, but, but you're stepping out in faith and, um, doing the best you can make it happen. You know, Tony, and you did that. Like, for example, you said there's an adventure quest retreat. I'm going to go. 
it's so often when the Lord would send them out two by twos, that's when the miracles happened is this going forth and you felt the nudge and you went. And sometimes when you feel a nudge, it's not a nudge of the Holy Spirit. It's the bad, uh, you know, peel and eat shrimp you had the night before talking to you or something. But if you move on inspiration, God will let you know if it's his will or not. And then you moved on the inspiration to really quit your career and come down and kind of figure out, Tony, what are we doing? We're going to shoot a reality show. You came down and <laughs> helped us for about six weeks. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're riding your motorcycle across the whole United States and you became my sidekick and you became such a key element to, to all of the seasons. So there's something about though, don't you think hearing that still small voice, but how do you hear it? You have to be quiet. <laughs> I think you have to be, um, you have to be quiet in prayer and, and be able to reflect, you know, you can always look, look into your past see what's going on there, see, evaluate where you are uh, in the present. But, you know, you don't, maybe you don't have the future quite figured out, or at least you have, you have some trust that um, you're in good hands. And I think for me, it, it's, it was that. I had and the trust that I'm in good hands with the Lord. Um, I've got confidence in myself that, yes, I am stepping out of the career for, for the time that it was. Um, and it was a, a good time for that anyway. And, you know, you don't know what's on the horizon, but just make the jump it, and mm -hmm. put all your effort into it. And it can and, be messy at first. You, you're sorting, you're sorting through things, but you're making progress every day. You're moving forward and the pieces start to kind of come into alignment. And then you look back and you go, oh, now I get it. Now, now I know why that didn't happen or why that did happen. We're talking with right. Tony Orband. He is my main sidekick on uh, the TV show Long Ride Home, um, and he's a, a good friend of mine. Um, he he's going to be take we're going to be taking the show. In fact, when this show airs, Tony, we're going to be in Hawaii shooting season three. And season two isn't even, won't even air until probably uh, early 2019. So much post production work to do on a reality show. So uh, we're getting excited about that, and then 2000. In August of 2019, we're going to make the run. It looks like Jeff Cavins and hopefully Tony will join us. We're going to make the run from Alaska down to Florida and meet up with all the Catholic bikers. Get the word out that August 6th in Lansing, Michigan, every Catholic biker in the universe needs to show up for our big meetup with the Knights on Bikes and the Catholic Cross Bears Motorcycle Ministry there. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You guys can, you may be listening to this on EDBTN radio or on a podcast or maybe on Sirius radio, but you can also view this show on our YouTube channel. You can subscribe to the show so it just kind of pops up when, when, when we post it and you get to see the show like sometimes two or three or four weeks earlier than everybody else. And for example, today you can see how good looking Tony Orband is and uh, our, 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 our cast member of Long Ride Home who's my guest. So and if you go to the YouTube channel, subscribe because it really helps us with our relationship with YouTube and then promoting our uh, promoting the show itself. But we are really excited about our new website, uh, deepadventure.com. Uh, we put up a new a new website that's first rate and real quality place for you to go. You can find so much there. We have a new thing we call the Mug Club. It's for everyone to come and join uh, to help promote and support the ministry and also get some free stuff for example, a coffee mug. And uh, so you could join the join the Bears uh, Mug Club. And then also for the men, I challenge you to, to join Bears Man Cave, especially right now with what's going on in the church. In the Man Cave, we really challenge each other, equip each other, mobilize each other uh, in various different ways that we post in the Man Cave, which is a private Facebook group. But don't even try to go to Facebook and join. You can't join it that way. It's a private, secret Facebook group. Go to deepadventure.com and, and click on the Man Cave uh, uh, button there and join there. And then about every two or three weeks or whenever we feel like it, we have a Zoom meetup, which is a two-way video chat, and all the men get together. And right now we're reading through my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, but more as a means to really 
um, <clears throat> have, a, have a real powerful dialogue with one another. So go to our website and, and, and subscribe to our newsletter because when you subscribe to the newsletter, we, we send you the show and we send you other stuff too. So it's, it's just, and, and then you become part of the community, uh, the adventure community. So we'd really appreciate if you did that. So we're talking with Tony Orband, who's, who's a cast member of Long Ride Home. And Tony and I, while, we're, while you're listening to this, are out in uh, Hawaii filming season three. We're going to my home my home in the islands, and we're going to be shooting in, on the island of Oahu. And we're even, even going to go to Molokai, where my dad was a deacon, and where St. Damien and St. Mary Ann were. Tony, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thanks, Bear. Glad to be here. So I see something kind of interesting uh, behind you. There's a, there's a window. Yeah. And is it cracked? Are you trying to, uh, you were just, you just, did you just install it? You notice the duct tape here. Yeah, but you just installed that window? Um, repaired it. Repaired it's it. It's been there and we were repairing it, had to redo all the glazing on the outside, sand it, you know, strip it, um, repaint it, prime it, all that good stuff. And in one of the uh, scraping portions of the project we ended up cracking the window. And there's a few other windows that got cracked. But, but, you, you know, so, it's so, but I like this thing about this, this beautiful window that we're seeing on YouTube, a beautiful view outside. Um, I think the Holy Spirit's opening up a window on the church right now, don't you? Uh, definitely. It's uh, in the spotlight, too. Yeah, yeah transparency. <clears throat> yes. Well, you're, you're in the middle right. of a whole remodeling project. Tell us about this, this house. And I think it's kind of interesting because it's kind of like what the Holy Spirit's doing to the church right now. He's, he's kind of updating, you know, renewing the church or remodeling. Tell, tell me about the house you're, you're remodeling. Updating and, you know, cleaning out um, things that need to be cleaned out. Well, tell basically. me, in the first part of the project, what did you clean out of that house? Um, everything that was here that had built up. So uh, a lot of... Um, a lot of furniture and things like that. So I kind of bought it as is and um, kept some of the furniture, some antiques and whatnot that need to be refinished. But it was um, kind of tough to walk through, actually. And so we spent basically the first few weeks, the first month or so, uh, kind of cleaning it out, um, helping a neighbor at the same time. And so that was its own little little project. Did you have to strip wallpaper and stuff like that or demolish anything or um, so far we've demolished the whole front porch, the, um, the roof section of the front porch had to do some repairs on that. It still needs work. It's a slate roof. So that's, um, uh, a bit, maybe more specialty kind well, of work. When you were in the uh, middle of the demolition, did it look uglier during the demolition than it did when you bought it? Actually got a little better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was definitely uglier. I mean, everything was a mess. The, the front yard was a mess. We had you know, th tools and everything's out and open and dust and dirt. And, um, you know, you have to clean it up, but it's little by little, you know, you have to focus on one specific area and clean it out, you know, you know decide what you're going to do. What's the end goal, uh, starting with that end goal in mind and then get there, work to get there. So that's what the Holy Spirit's doing right now in the church. It's going to get messy. We're, the, the Holy Church is, it, the Holy Spirit is cleaning house. And so it might be a little bit messy at first, right? Yeah, M much needed though. It has to be done. You know, if if you let it continue uh, in decline, um, the way it is, without you know shaving off and removing what needs to be removed, it's it's going to be dirty, and there's going to be the detritus there um, until somebody takes it out and cleans it up and fixes it. And so it you know it has to be done. You know, uh, Saint Francis was told to rebuild the church. And the laity right now has a powerful role. The, the Pope, the cardinals, the bishops, the priests, uh, the clergy have a powerful role, but the laity is always, has always called to have a, a powerful role too. And so I see us right now, the Holy Spirit is on the move. And it may be this, this new evangelization, this wave of the new evangelization. It may be the very prayers of these people that is, uh, you know, joining with God's will and God's grace to unleash the power of the Holy Spirit to clean house. So why would people in, be involved, the most devout uh, Catholics, the people most involved in the new evangelization should not be disheartened? This is an answer to their prayer. The, 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 this, this, this house is going through a cleansing. Like It's like when you see some of the ancient uh, paintings 
uh, in the Vatican, you know, museum or some of the cathedrals, the, like some of the cathedrals, they'll go through and they'll really clean the stones and realize, oh, it wasn't that gray color. That was just the soot and stuff. Now look at how beautiful that fresco looks or, or the, the stone looks. We should be excited that the Holy Spirit, in an answer to your prayers, is cleaning house, and it's going to get uglier before it gets pretty again. And that, like you said, with the stones on the outside, those are the parts you can see. But like with, with this house, it was the parts that um, you can't see every day that were some of the most challenging. You know, we just finished up uh, a, few, a few weekends of doing plumbing, and that's all underneath the house in the you know, smelly, dank, stagnant air, um, and having to refurbish everything and, and make it new. Um, you know, bring some light down there, bring some air down there, and uh, get it working again. And, you know, right now you're sitting in front of a, a window, which you were repairing, and it's cracked. And, yes. and, and, and but, 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 there, but the window, you can see this beautiful view. You can see out, and you can see in, and the church needs this transparency. Maybe it's cracked right now a little bit, but we're going to put up new windows and we're going to, the church is going to become healthier and stronger. We don't care about, what we need to care about is God's perfect will. And as Pope Benedict said, the church might get smaller. I don't really focus on that. I just focus on one thing and that's the integrity and the devotion of the the laity and the clergy and uh, standing for for God. And so I think your illustration of your remodeling that house is just, is perfect. What are you hearing from, uh, your, in, in your age group? What are you hearing people say? Um, actually I haven't been out with them too much because I've been in this house working on it, but I have had, uh, some friends come over most of the time where we're nose deep in tearing down the wall, or like I said, tearing down the front porch or plumbing or whatever it is. Um, but I think there's, um, for me, it's a sense of, of humility. You know, you see all this stuff going on and you say, you know, you can easily point the finger and say, oh, bad people, bad people. But you, you can point it back at yourself and and check your humility. Um, find out. Well, it's it's like the uh, check for the board in your own eye before you try to pull the splinter out of your neighbor's mm-hmm. eye. Um, you got to check yourself. Make your make sure yourself you're on the right footing. Um before you, you know, really go out and tackle um, the other problem. It, but that's not name. to avoid the other issue, but God is calling us to, to holiness, I think, right now. Tell me, um, right. in, in, in the next, like, 60 seconds, what is your normal prayer and, and what's your weekly devotion routine and things like that that, that you have in your life? Um, quiet in the evening. Um, when I get home from work, there's things to be done on the house and whatnot. And it's, it's, you know, you've got the full work day and there's so much to be done. There's so much going on in your mind. Um, all these different projects running in the background, multifaceted and, you know, family and friends and all that comes into play. So really for me, it's, um, a quiet reflection sort of at the end of the day. Um, and then, um, waking up, with a mindset of gratitude. And that's one thing, there's a few things I've learned uh, specifically here, gratitude and patience and uh, courage. There's a lot to be done. You got to take the time to do it well and be thankful for the people who are around you helping you out. We're going to talk about that a little bit more when we get back. We're talking with Tony Orban. He's my sidekick. You know, you have an IMDB, uh, you have an IMDB profile now. So you're a rock star in Hollywood. Uh, but no, we're talking about Tony Orban, uh, my sidekick in the Long Ride Home TV show, reality series. We're about to go to Hawaii to film ser- season three. Season two will be up uh, uh, sometime in early 2019. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to remind everybody that Long Ride Home is showing on iTunes and Prime Video and Google Play. And this is your chance to share it with your sons, uh, your family, to sit down and power watch it on a rainy afternoon. It's just a great show. And we have as my guest today, my co-adventure guide, Tony Orband, 
who's my sidekick. And Tony, you know what's so cool about you is what in the, when we ride as a pack, you're always just to the right of me and a little bit back. So you're you're the main guy there. And t- tell people what your role is when we ride in the pack. What our, what our relationship is when we ride. Um, my main role as we're riding in the pack, you know, there's traffic, there's a lot of hazards going on. And so you as the leader are, um, seeing those hazards firsthand and then you communicate those back. So my role is to, uh, mimic your hand signals and we, we all know what the hand signals mean. So I mimic your hand signal and send that down the line. So that last guy doesn't get a surprise of a, a tire in the road after everybody else has swerved around it, you got to send that message down the line. So I'm the, you know, first link in that chain. You know, and the hand Top. signals are kind of, kind of cool, huh? We, we all know what they mean. It's kind of like everyone knows what the are, what the sign of the cross means too. But for me personally, the role that I, I makes a big change for me is how you are basically, uh, first of all, you're the, you're the navigator for us. That's I'm watching it, yeah. the road and where we're going and you might be, yeah, tell them about that. Well, that too, the navigation, and that's always interesting because, you know, we will have things come up and we detour. So it's always, you know, retooling our route to make sure that at the end of the day we get to the um, the final destination. Um, but, you know, sometimes we're – I remember when we were going – let's see. Uh, we were going through Miami on season two, <laughs> and there was one point where we are we're, there's traffic on the right and there's clear road up and up ahead, but we have to go to the right. And, um, I don't think that message got through in the, in the GPS. So I darted ahead and kind of led the pack over. Um, it's kind of a last minute decision. Don't like to do that at all really, but it had to be done to get everybody back in line on the right train so we could avoid, you know, a 15 minute detour. I'll tell you what, Tony, when her- you do that, when you do that, First of all, you don't ever break pack, rule number one, but sometimes you have to. And when he does that, when all of a sudden I see him him fire up his Harley and go his motorcycle and go flying by me, I feel a sense of uh, a real sense of relief and confidence that okay, Tony's got this. He I mean, he looks pretty cool doing it, Tony. I got to admit, you look really manly doing it too. All of a sudden he'll he'll he'll, he'll rev up and go past us. Uh, sometimes for quite a while you'll you'll have scoped out a very a route through a very difficult area and you'll and you'll weave us through situations and uh, difficult situations and so for me to have tony there as my sidekick and my navigator he's like my compass plus i can count on tony not to do anything stupid you know uh, when he's back there i know no one's going to roll up on my back and things like that he's just i'm just very confident in his ability to ride formation but there's something about in life how men need a pack uh, we need it. We need to have a group of men that we respect, that will challenge us, that will equip us, that will help mobilize us. Right? The pack looks That's stupid unless it's moving. Right? That's right. But you, you and I on that ride guys. are particularly tight. You got to have that one friend that you can really go to. Yeah, and you, you sharpen each other, right? Iron sharpens iron. But I, I mean, so many times, Tony, I, I, like, and also you're the guy, like. Things aren't going right, and uh, we're pulling over for fuel. And I go, Tony, can you? I, mean, I don't know. Maybe we need to change hotel reservations or something, or we're supposed to meet someone we don't know how. And I, I remember it, it took me a while to get used to it, uh, it that Tony was so willing to do it. And I'd say, I say, Tony, and I would be saying Tony all the time, and I felt so bad about always calling <laughs> your name. Uh, but then I would see him quietly just playing with his phone, like, what's he doing? And then he goes, Okay, we got it. We're gonna do this, you know. Like, I think maybe you dealt with the, the crisis with Jay Flunker's motorcycle. Okay, we're going to call. we got it taken care of, you know. So he would just make things go away. But you know why I'd always call your name, Tony? Because I knew you oh, would I... do it. Yeah, yeah. Had to be done. <laughs> and if Had you don't hear done. the Lord Who calling your name right now, maybe it's because you're a flake. You know, people out there are saying, Lord, use me to do these great things. Well, maybe you haven't taken care of the small things. Uh, if you hear the Lord, like, I, yeah, go ahead. Tell me, Tony. You, I was just going to say, you got to have, um, like I said earlier, you got to have your you got to have your stuff together um, to be able to help others. 
and, and not not to be the one that's drawing all the resources and um, requiring the help, although we do help each other. But to a certain level, you got to have your stuff together to be able to then reach out and help others. That's so and, powerful. And take care of those tasks. And when God calls, you do it. And I'll see someone who really I haven't seen do much come to me and say, God's told me to do this big thing. And I go, well, probably not. You know, maybe he's asking you to do a small thing and prove that you're, uh, improve your ability to, to hear and do his will. Uh, and all these small things build to bigger things. But, um, yeah, if, if you haven't, haven't heard God's voice asking you to do something, maybe it's because you're a spiritual flake and maybe you need to take, uh, your walk with the Lord a little bit more diligently and let him use you because the Lord wants to use you. But I'm convinced that most of the stuff I do, there was someone else God probably had in mind to do it, but they just, they just weren't available. You know, sorry, I've got the news on. I don't have time to hear God's voice. And he tapped your shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> you feel like that's what happened to you in Galveston. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, you know, I was at the doorway Yeah. and then he said, okay, he's at the doorway. Let's tap his shoulder, see if he'll step through. God doesn't need your plans. God just needs you. And he doesn't need you to be the smartest person in the world or the most gifted person. He just needs you to be willing. But if you spend your days just in busy, 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 you know, like you said earlier, you don't hear his voice. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that... You got to be able to reflect and have, have that time of uh, silence. I guess, you know, everybody does it differently. But for me, it's that time of silence is crucial. Time on the motorcycle is a good way too, huh? The solitude on a motorcycle. Definitely. Yeah, you got to pull that speaker out of the helmet though, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think um, you said something so profound that you have to be in a position to be able to help people. And that means you have to live a life of virtue. Yes. And the Prudence specifically for me. <laughs> Tell me about that. Um, in doing this home repair, you know, it's a big task for me. This is way out of my skill set. This is way out of my uh, set of knowledge. So there were a lot of questions and hesitation as to, uh, is this a smart thing to do? But again, I'm kind of looking around. I've got certain affairs in order. I've got um, lots of people who I can rely on their skills to help me and teach me. Um, I can learn from them and, and put my best effort into it. And so I decided, you know, okay, we can do this. So I think that, that prudence is um, really important for me. And I really love it because this whole thing about the house is really just an allegory uh, for your life of service in the church and for ours too. You know, the, the, the catechism says something really interesting about virtue. It says, for those who live the life of virtue, it provides a life of ease. Mm -hmm. Like, what? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think All what right. it's saying <laughs> is it gets rid of the clutter. Like this morning as I was praying, I, you know, the sun was starting to rise out, looking over the ocean, having a prayer time. I just had to stand up and say to the Lord, make my life simple, Lord. In other words, show me your will. Get rid of the clutter. Right? Just show me your simple will. It doesn't mean it's easy. God's will is usually hard. But we learn to enter into God's rest. We, we work hard at entering his rest, and then God takes care of the rest. But, but the, the life of virtue will put you in a position for God to use you because you've gotten rid of the clutter and confusion. If there's a lot of drama in your life, take a personal inventory and see maybe you're saying yes to too many things and no, and not saying no enough to certain things. What's the number one thing the Lord's taught you in the last year in that area, would you say, in the, in the area of virtue? Well, real quick yeah. on that thought, to expand on it, um, my thought is that... Um, you know, the rough edges are still there and they're still being sharpened off. So, you know, for me, that's a constant thing. So it's it's that pursuit of virtue. Mm. You don't have to be, it's not like there's a destination you have to get to um, before he can call on you, before you can hear the voice and, and um, take action. But, you know, daily pursuit, right? And you fall down sometimes and you get back up, keep going and get better and better and better. And you're doing that by the use, by, by the sacramental life and you're doing that by prayer and you're doing that by God's grace, but your your point in it is to is determination uh, to when you get when you fall to get up and 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 uh, and to move forward. So the thing is, is you're not on the side of the road, you're on the path. You know the whole thing. Salvation comes uh, uh, 
salvation says, work out your salvation in fear and, tre and, and, and trembling. And there used to be these rocks on the, on the sides of the roads on the Roman highways called soterial stones, which meant salvation stones. People would write little messages on there, like someone running in the Olympics might say, to his God, help me win my race. Where our soterial stone is Jesus Christ. Soteriology is the study of, of salvation. But you got to be on the road. And then if, if you fall, you get up, you keep going. We're talking with Tony Orban. Tony, uh, we'll be seeing you in Hawaii. Uh, in fact, when this airs, we're going to be in Hawaii. Uh, we invite, we want to invite everybody to uh, go to our website, deepadventure.com. Um, and until next week, we will, uh, we will uh, uh, hear from you again. You'll hear from us again. You can watch my Ocean Sunrise Catechisms every morning at 7 a.m. if you follow me on Facebook. Until then, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Tony, thank you for, you for joining us. You want to give us a Viva Cristo Rey? Viva Cristo Rey. Aloha. We'll be right back next week with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10-episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com.